Hey everybody, Brendan here. Welcome back to another tournament game analysis video. Today we are going to be covering round five of the Canadian Open 2022. I am now playing against Pravan and I'm playing with the white pieces. I'm on a minus one score right now. I lost two games. I won one and then I drew one. Uh, this is an open event, so well, kind of any event where if you lose games, except for round robins, I guess, but if you lose games in this event, then you're going to be playing lower rated opponents. So now I'm playing 1400. Uh, and let's see how the game goes. My opponent has been doing well this tournament, though, uh, as a warning. So are they underrated? Maybe a little bit. Let's find out how the game goes, of course. So d4, e6. So this is something that's... Um, maybe familiar to some Nimzo Indian players or Queen's Gambit Decline players where they're inviting you to go into a French defense. Now I would be happy to because I like playing the French, but of course here I'm not interested in that. I go c4, d5, knight to c3, knight to f6, and now it's just a classical Queen's Gambit Declined, knight f3, bishop e7, bishop g5 and c6, uh, Queen's Gambit Decline slash Semislav, nothing crazy. e3, Knight bd7, and now uh, bishop to d3 here. Castles, castles, h6, bishop h4. Uh, I don't really want to take immediately unprovoked, so I want to wait for knight h5, which was played. Uh, of course, I wasn't expecting knight h5, but if it's played, then I'm a little happy about that. So knight h5 is kind of just an inaccuracy. It's not such a great move. And the reason why is because it's just awkward on h5. Sure, it does invite a trade, but this trade, although it might feel like it helps black because black has less space, the big issue here is that that was their good bishop. Uh, if we look at their pawn chain, their worst bishop is their light squared bishop, um, and that maintains it. And now there's actually a chance for me to transpose into a slightly different opening, which gives me good chances at a clear advantage, which is knight e5. And the idea is if knight f6, because the knight on h5 was attacked, then I can play f4. And with the absence of the dark square bishops, this favors me heavily if we look at the structure. Um, normally their bishop on d6 would always potentially threaten to take on, on e5, uh, at least would make it harder for me to play knight e5. Here, that's not true. Um, this is a actually just a significant problem where they don't even get e4 as a response if they could play knight e4 and i couldn't take it like if i had a dark squared bishop instead then uh things are okay for them but here white actually has um a clear advantage instead i go knight d2 trying to exploit the knight and then go for e4 which just doesn't make sense but i go for it anyways they trade naturally takes takes and then knight f6 so now honestly the position's equal i kind of lost my chance at an edge already um and queen e2 doesn't help so this now i'm fighting for equality it's still equal technically um but you have to see here that there's this move bishop c2 which is not easy to see like, like just giving up a full pawn and uh somehow you just have to accept that this is okay but that's not something I would have been happy to do. It's not fully clear how this is such a good pawn because the variation goes you take and then you play b3. Like it's understandable in the sense that sure our um, bishop is better than theirs. I don't even think b3 is correct though. I think that might even make it so black is slightly better already. But yeah, that's, um, that's a big problem is something like this would happen where it just, it feels like black's the only one pushing uh, despite it being equal according to the engine. So this would not be ideal. Uh, instead, there's a much easier move queen f3. I don't know why I didn't see this. It's just one move further um, and it's much better. And the idea behind queen f3 here is now if rook d8, we have rook a to d1 and there's a big difference. Rook takes d4, we can take on f6. And if queen takes, we trade queens, and then we play bishop h7, winning an exchange. Uh, the problem with queen on e2 is this isn't possible because 
after this variation here of rook d1, uh, rook takes d4, knight takes f6, after they take back, we can see that the rook is defended, we can't trade queens. So this is a problem. Uh, all of a sudden, we're down a pawn. So I played queen e3, but this isn't any better. Uh, this just loses a pawn from knight g4. I just completely, I don't know how and why I missed this, but I just completely missed it. Queen e2, rook takes d4. Um, so I tried to go for imbalances. Queen takes g4, rook takes d3, and then queen e2. I think there's like slight, you know, there's a slight uh, imbalance here. Um, I, again, I think only black's playing for the win, but at least I can try to make things annoying with some sort of c5. I was expecting um, a potential b6 here. Uh, I kept looking at like b6s, bishop b7s, or like c5s, uh, but instead bishop d7 got played. c5 for me now, and I'm happy to get my knight into d6, where it'll be a little annoying. Um, and then bishop e8 was played. Uh, I think b6 is definitely the best try here. b4, and then some sort of e5, uh, and then to develop the bishop this way. That wasn't played, bishop e8 was played. And this is a little passive, so now actually white does have full compensation uh, after knight d6, b6, and b4. But of course, me on tilt, losing a pawn out of the opening, I play worse. I just keep playing worse and worse. It, and this is actually a good psychological tip to learn, is a lot of people say chess isn't psychology, there's no psychology in chess. Maybe people don't say that, maybe I'm just making up like a straw man argument just to deliver a point. Uh, but something to mention here is that when you make your first mistake, sometimes it's just going from a slightly better position to an equal one or an equal to like slightly worse. But generally, your first mistake hopefully doesn't lose you the game. It, should, it shouldn't be just like a, a loss quite yet. But the one thing that we should learn from it is that that mistake might not lose us the game, but the mistakes after it will. So once you make a mistake like losing a pawn out of the opening, it's time to buckle down, grow up a little bit, and just accept, okay, we're a pawn down. What's the best we can make of the, out of the situation? And here I was hesitant to uh, avoid making too many complications. I understand why I did it. I took on a5 in this position, trying to make it really complicated, completely unnecessary though. Uh, I could have played a3, we could have gotten into a position like this, and sure, uh, it feels like black can only be better here, but okay, our knight on d6 is pretty happy, we can maybe just like bring everything to defend the c5 pawn, the knight will be annoying on d6 for the rest of the game, and unless they sacrifice the exchange, um, which is definitely possible, they'll get two pawns for it, but might not be something they want to do. Um, yeah, so this is probably how it should go. This is uh, equal, but it feels again like black is the one on the better side of this anyways. But I don't do this. I play b takes a5, going for imbalances because silly old me is trying to push instead of play the position properly. b takes c5, which was objectively correct. Uh, this forces me to move my knight, and this is what I was expecting here with knight c4. And I was expecting uh, rook takes d1, and then like rook takes d1, for example, and I thought like, okay, I'm actually kind of happy here. Uh, it's still relatively messy. I can play like rook d6, queen e3, but my opponent finds a great move, rook d4. And this causes problems because I don't want to take that rook, but if I don't take it, it's very active. So another idea, they might just like double up on the d file as well, start trading things. Uh, that could also be a bit frustrating to deal with. Uh, so I play rook d to b1, and the idea is maybe I'm going to play like rook b6, maybe I'll play like rook b2, and then double up on the b file. I wasn't sure. Queen h4, g3. Um, I don't think I'm too upset with any trades here. I think I can just go into them with like knight d6. Um, doesn't look super duper awful, like rook b6 already. Looks like it might just be fine, a6, for example. 
in black might actually have to be careful here. Looks like we'll be fine, Rook C1. We can start liquidating everything. Even if it turns into a 4v3 with uh, Rooks on the board, just Rooks on the board, it feels like there's better holding chances. But all right, uh, G3, Queen F6. And I would have loved to play something like B3, uh, Rook B3 or Rook B2, but the problem is Rook takes C4. And B2 is hanging, or A1 would have been hanging. So now I changed my strategy and put A4. And the idea is now I'm going to develop this rook along the third rank. Bishop D7, rook A3. Bishop C8, very good maneuver from them. Surprise, like This is just very surprising. The idea is where does the bishop belong? It belongs on A6, and they find that very quickly. I play Queen C2, trying to get out of the pin. Maybe rook F3 was a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, I was a little bit concerned of queen g6, though, where after rook c1, then they just play bishop a6, and then we're probably just getting into trades. So at least queen c2 was trying to avoid trades, uh, which is what I played. Now we see e5, another great move, and the idea is they're just going to develop on this side now, because now my queen is kind of horribly placed and is running into bishop f5s. So I play rook e1, we see bishop f5, and I play queen c3. So originally when I played queen c3, I thought there were complications here that worked out for me. Um, now, yeah, I don't quite think they do, unfortunately. Um, because in this position, after taking on a3, I believe it is... Um, let me see here. I'm pretty sure there's a move here. Maybe it's bishop e6? I'm not sure, actually. It's not that. I thought it was rook a5, but this doesn't make much sense. Let me see here. Queen takes e5. Oh, maybe it was just taking immediately, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was taking immediately, and then maybe, like, rook takes a5? Um, looked like a problem. I think this was it. Yeah. Um, this is what I was worried about. So I didn't go for that. I ended up just taking on d3, trying to create more imbalances. This immediately just didn't work out, though. It was an attempt. I can't really be too upset about it, though. My idea was that e5 is probably going to fall. And if I could take off c5 and c6, it's probably just fine for me, actually. Because I can just use my extra piece, because I do have an extra piece here. It's just, you know, rook and knight versus a queen is generally not fun. Uh, if there's a lot of pawns on the board. In this case, there is a lot of pawns on the board, and it's just not enough. Queen f5, uh, rook e to d1. I was also looking at rook e3, but the problem is f6. Um, and I would have loved to play this, but also f6 is a bit of an issue here. If rook f3, then queen h5 looks interesting, but so does this. And if knight d3, queen d5, this is very messy. Maybe this was actually a better chance for me, but I ended up playing rook e d1, uh, king h7. And then uh, rook d7, trying to get counterplay on the 7th rank here, because I realized that I'm just not going to be able to pick up the pawns. So queen g4, knight takes e5. I was a little happy to play that, but this, again, just doesn't work out, because if the c pawns were gone, this would be a different story. Uh, there'd be more chances, but for how the position is now, there isn't actually a chance to hold this. Rook takes a5, knight e5, c4 f4 to try to hold on to the knight and at least get a little bit of activity for it because like a dream scenario is like rook f7 rook df7 but the problem is they're attacking d1 so it doesn't even work c3 uh rook c1 the the pawn is also too quick and they also have a really strong move here that i missed queen e4 uh and after queen e4 i just resigned because i'm essentially just losing my rook and there's not really a way to avoid it because they're also threatening c2, and even if they play it slow, c2, rook b5, b1, I can't take the rook, the pawn, and I can't do nothing about it, because queen e3 or queen e1 check will either pick up the rook on c3 or c1. Uh, it's 
can't, can't really make a reasonable king move either. If I go to f1, h1 will pick up the rook. Uh, if I go to f2, then rook a2 will probably just may immediately. So uh, that's why after queen e4, I ended up just resigning. Very well played by my opponent. Like I, I just played bad moves and they played good ones. And that's how chess is sometimes. It doesn't, ratings do not matter. Uh, if your opponent plays a better game than you, then they deserve to win. Simple as that. A uh, bit frustrating because now I'm on minus two. Um, but I'm hoping to come back into the tournament. And let's just say the tournament goes better than expected from here on out. So that was a nice change. Um, another thing to note, I guess, from this one is that I, I believe I was uh, rushing again. I I don't believe I wasn't. Like, I, I think I was, again, just... I don't know if it's... It's hard to explain why I was making moves fast during this uh, range of time. But generally, I, I think it had to do with I wanted to pressure my opponents to, like on the clock and the position and everything. But in doing so, I wasn't thinking critically. And I don't know if it was because I pretty much was playing a lot online at the time, which I immediately like stopped doing soon, soon after this, just to avoid any uh, of these problems anymore. Or if it's underestimating opponents, it feels like it has to be partially that too. Even if they're higher rated, I was I was rushing positions. But there were just a lot of situations like this where there's not really excuses for it. But I'm just trying to find reasons and just work on that. Because I, I don't want to make an excuse of why I lost the game. What I'm trying to find is the root of the problem to find solutions and improvements. And... All I knew at this time was that was a big part of it, was I just wasn't using my time effectively at all. So that's going to cover it for the game. I hope you guys at least enjoyed it, and hopefully it was at least a little interesting. I think it was. My opponent, again, completely deserved the win. And I will see you all in game number six of this event. Have a good one. Bye-bye.